It's not looking good for Disney. Uh, not looking good at all. The latest report is that their theme parks uh, are not doing so well. And this is, at first I thought, well, what can we tell by the wait times at the rides? They're down from 31 minutes in 2022 to 27 minutes now. Okay, so that's four minutes. Do we care? Yeah. Uh, granted, it's down from 47 minutes in 2019. But the group that actually, whose job it is to watch this, they collect waiting time data from info provided by the Disney Parks mobile apps, um, and they measure it. This is the sole purpose for this organization. They come out and said that this is actually unfathomable this fall time or this, this uh, yeah, the fall time in the wait list, which is good for the rest of us, but it's bad for yeah. Disney. And um, it comes at a time where, of course, Disney's reputation is hemorrhaging. Disney's movie business has lost a ton of mo money. We covered that last week because of the huge investment in woke films that nobody wants to go see. Uh, and now even Bob Iger, who was president and now is back as CEO, uh, is saying, I think we may have misjudged things on our price hikes. Maybe perhaps there wasn't the market for these big inflated pr prices. Hello, Bob, especially not given what you've done to your brand, you and your predecessor. Uh, so what do you make of the, the hemorrhaging over at Disney? I remember growing up, I'm from New York originally, but we grew up in South Florida. And I remember my dad and my mom saving up money the entire year. Let's go to three hours away to Orlando and go check out Disney World. It was the, the entire year we were focused on going there. Parents aren't doing that anymore. Families aren't doing that anymore because of leaked audio and video saying 50% have to be LGBTQ XYZ or whatever um, as the stars of our animated films, which is crazy. I never thought of a cartoon having a sexuality. Um, also, our live action films, 50% uh, have to be this, and we have to ESG and DEI that thing. They can still save it. This isn't Bud Light. Bud Light's done. Um, they're they're off the top 10, even the, of the favorite beers in America now. They were number one before the whole Dylan Mulvaney thing. Disney can still save it if they use their brains. If they decide, let's just make wholesome family fun, doesn't matter what their sexuality is, doesn't matter what the makeup of their family is, let's just get them into the theme park. It takes me back to the 1980s and 90s when Michael Jordan had the Jordan brand shoes pretty pretty new with Nike. And somebody said, you know, why are you pushing this for everybody? You've got to take a stand against this politically or that politically. And he said, even Republicans buy sneakers. At some point, these companies, these corporations, these woke ideologies have to be put aside and they have to think to themselves, we have to make the money first. And then we can do whatever we want charitably after that. We can make any decision we want around our kitchen, you know, dinner table at night with our families. But when we want the entirety of the country or even the world to, to travel to Orlando or Anaheim and go and go to our parks or go to the movie theater and spend $100 for a family to go see a movie with some, some beverages, we probably should keep our mouths shut about things some people have a problem with. It's really kind That's of that simple. I really, do you agree with that, Megan? I think that Disney can of save course. it if they use their brains. Yes, of course, I wish they would, but I think they're too far gone to actually do so. I mean, it's not just their movies Probably anymore. Right. We ran video a couple weeks ago of some guy in the bibbity bobbity boo uh, boutique where you Love go that. with your little girl who wants a Disney princess dress, and it was a guy. It was a guy dressed as a woman. And look, my kids are now uh, 13, 12, and almost 10, so they're old enough to understand. You know, they've been around me long enough to understand what's happening in the gender thing, Lane. But the, I would not take Littles into that store and have them be confused by that. This guy's in a dress trying to be their fairy godmother. No, it's a hard no. Um, yeah. So I do think that there's a fair element of politics here where Republicans and conservatives and even Democrats who are not on board with this nonsense are not gonna go support this brand that's doing it or subject their kids who are trying to have a magical experience um, to this kind of nonsense. So. It is I, magic. A, a, a guy in a beard was a princess. That's magic, isn't it? Um, it? No, I'm with you. I saw that video. I couldn't agree more. When when you walk in, when you take your family, you want that fantasy. I just don't understand what the companies think they're gaining. What did Bud Light think they were gaining by having this guy make who's making fun of women drink a beer with his picture on it? What does Disney think they're gaining by having the princess be a bearded man? I don't know. What, if they I can know. explain to me, here's what we get. I know. This is what we get. At. Okay, please enlighten me. That it gives them the ability to say they're better than us. That's what they want. Moral superiority. That's what wokeism gives these people. Meaning in a meaningless life. The ability to look at the deplorables out there, uh, and that includes way more than just the diehard Trump supporters, folks, uh, and say, you're shitty people, and we are the enlightened elite. I'm part of a special cabal of enlightened people. You wouldn't understand because you're not part of it, but I will lecture you on how to live your life well and be respectful and inclusive of other groups. Let me lead by example. 
I'll put Dylan Mulvaney in a beer can and I'll solve all the world's problems. I'll put a dude in a dress in the Bibbidi Bobbidi boutique. And therefore, <laughs> uh, I will leave this earth knowing I left it better than the way I found it. That's how they think. Yeah, but are they so dumb that they don't realize as they're looking down their nose, I'm keeping my money in my wallet? And you're keeping it in right. your purse. And we're not going to go there. We're not going to travel there. I hope that their wait times are two seconds soon. And then maybe they'll realize, holy crap, nobody's waiting for our rides. Maybe we should change um, our, our, our elitism and hide it. At, le at least, look, Megan, if they're smart, they'll at least hide it. They're putting it right out there for us all to say, well, then I choose not to go to your, your little park. I'll go to Mount Rushmore. Yeah, that's exactly right. I want to tell you about the amazing Extreme Altitude Wines from the Bonner Private Wine Partnership. These flavors go great with any hearty meal and meat that you are likely to have or serve. They're unlike any wine you've ever tasted. Blackberry, leather, smoke, little dark cherry. The wines are almost impossible to get on your own. The producers deep in the Andes Mountains make limited quantities. And now I have a great offer for you. If you visit Bonner Private Wines, Dot com slash MKS. That's B-O-N-N-E-R, privatewines.com slash MKS. You'll not only get wine for over 50% off, 5 plus free shipping, you'll also get a bonus bottle of small batch limited production wine from their exclusive wine cellar. That's four bottles for the price of three. It's a deal that is hard to turn down if you are a wine lover like I am. They've cut out the middleman too, so you're not going to pay a big markup. Just visit B-O-N-N-E-R, privatewines.com slash M-K-S to claim your bonus bottle and become a part of America's most unique wine club. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.